Um, I guess to start, without giving any spoilers away for where this episode is going to be going, um, you're an ordained minister, you're a proud gay man, and you were an Anglican priest for 10 years, is that right? Yeah, I was ordained an Anglican priest. Um, I'm a minister of the word in the United Church. Uh, that's all part of my story. And yep. yes, I'm uh, married to a lovely man called Scott. Scott Minor. I've uh, been together for about 14 years. Wow, yeah. congratulations. We haven't been married that long because marriage has come a bit later. But sure. Yeah. Yep. Which I'm sure we'll get into. So how do those elements of your life come together? Like, tell me how. Because for, for people that may not be from church land, from Jesus land, those are three very distinct things that may not, at first glance, go together. Yeah, and I don't think I did a very good job at trying to navigate that for a big part of my life mm-hmm. um, because they don't. You, you grow up in the church. Um, I remember being told very clearly that you you know, you know you can't be a Christian and gay mm. um, and that that's incompatible with the, the Jesus life, um, uh, that um, God's plan for gay people is even worse than that, was that you would die of AIDS as a consequence of, of, of that kind of lifestyle and behaviour. Um, and, and yet for me, uh, you know, when you're starting to go through puberty, you know, all my friends were, you know, in the main becoming attracted to women and I discovered, discovered this attraction for men emerging in myself and I'm going, oh, what do I do with this? Mm. Um, so, yeah, beginning to explore that, then impressing that to wanting to be faithful, to follow Christ, and um, and then realising that, and we can unpack a little bit more of this, and, mm. and realising that um, after a period of time that it's actually harmful to change this. Yeah. <laughs> so how do I live faithfully with this? Did you know? your family try to pray the gay away, as they say? Yeah, um, my uh, so I grew up in quite a conservative evangelical family, mm. and that's the faith that was dear to me growing up. Yep. Um, and I still hold a lot of that. There's not a sense that that's that's um, you know uh, suddenly transformed into some kind of something different. But I have progressed a long way. Um, yeah, so there was the pray the gay away. I also did ex gay therapy for a number of years to uh, you know I really hang on. Can you hang on, brother? Yeah. Yes. You what? Did e- what again? Ex gay therapy. Ex gay therapy. Well, so that where they try to make you not gay, right? So through prayer and counselling and so on and so forth, there's a number of programs that are in existence. Um, like this is a true, real thing? Yeah, uh, it, it's less so today. With therapists, with shrinks? Uh, how yeah, there, there actually were some psychologists that were, were a part of it. And in fact, it was one of the psychologists at a conference that I was at in New Zealand who actually rocked my world saying, um, uh, there are some people who will never rid themselves of same-sex attraction. And for me, I'm like... <sighs> Huh. Anyway, so that pushed me into pray even more. Well, God's more powerful than you. Who do you think you are? And I remember this moment where everyone's all praying and I'm praying that I, this same-sex attraction would, would leave and then I would be restored to a healthy heterosexual attraction and be able to get oh. married and have kids and that kind of stuff. And, and there was a breaking moment at, at that moment where I looked up and there was this Canadian guy praying for me and I looked at him and I just looked at him and I went, man, he's so hot. <laughs> God, this is not working. (laughs) I've been down this track three years with you and you have not changed me. (laughs) Everything around me is saying you can change me and you're not changing me. So this is on you now. I've given you everything to change. And so I walked back out of the whole ex-gay stuff um, and went, I'm I'm, going to have to go on a different journey because – and I saw – you know, this is some of the dark side of it. People go to the edge of, of you know, of, of suicide ideation, not wanting to continue life. Um, people leave in faith completely and say, I can't have anything more to do with yeah, Christianity. Yeah. Um, and for me, my faith and how I am as a human are so t- connected that I just, it's just impossible to divorce it, right? Yeah. So how do you faithfully live yeah. with all of that? So yeah. that's that's kind of how, how I began to, you know, change my view this is a